What's up, guys? Derek, more plates, more dates.com. Today, I wanted to do a quick deep dive. Is that, I don't even know if that makes sense. A quick deep dive on uh, Carterine's cancer data. So, this is something I sort of skimmed over in my initial video, but I kind of wanted to do a dedicated uh, topic video to it because a lot of people are missing the uh, picture on it and they think the dosage is some exorbitant amount that would otherwise you know, they're justifying their use by thinking, oh, the dosage that caused the cancer in rats was like like thousands of milligrams, when in reality, it really wasn't. With that being said, I don't necessarily think that it's carcinogenic at all. I just want to display the data as it's, you know, actually presented and clarify a lot of convoluted things in regards to it. So at the 48th annual meeting of the Society of Toxicology in 2009, which was two years after Carterine's abandonment, data was presented showing that Carterine caused cancer to develop rapidly in several organs in animal testing. So like I mentioned in the first video, the first thing to note is the fact that the aforementioned study involved in administering Carterine to Han Wistar rats for almost two years straight um, without being administered any chemicals at all. The median life expectancy of Han Wistar rats is between 30 to 33 months for females and 33 to 36 months for males. And the reason for this is the number of adenocarcinomas they develop. So but before we even look at the animal models, you already know that the rats are not expected to live more than three years, irrespective of what they're administered because of their very high probability of developing cancer. So obviously, I feel like that is flawed to begin with. But delving into it further, the dosages administered to rats over the two-year study varied widely, but the lowest dosage showing cancer cell proliferation in an animal model was 3 milligrams per kilogram per day in Han Wistar rats for a period of 104 weeks. So the average weight of Han Wistar rats is 509 grams or 0 0.509 kilograms. So... The following equation is used to calculate roughly what that dosage would equate to in humans. So this is more what the video is going to delve into here. So human equivalent dose, we have this equation here. I'm assuming, you know, most people are around, I'm putting in 80 kilograms into this equation just to give you a reference point of what a, an 80 kilogram man, the human equivalent dose would be in this context. So the human equivalent dose, once you break down the calculation, comes out to 0 0.56535134170 milligrams per kilogram. So once you multiply that into and factoring in the body weight of at 80, 80 kilogram human male, you get 45.228107336363 milligrams. So recreationally, the standard dosage is between 10 to 20 milligrams per day. Um, and in actual clinical phase one and two trials for carterine, you had dosages up to 10 milligrams being used, which is, frankly, it's not far off from the minimum human equivalent dosage to yield accelerated cancer development in the aforementioned rodent model. So I just want to clarify the equation here because there was a lot of uh, ambiguity on it. And frankly, I actually have miscalculated it in the past before and thought it was way higher than it is. But in fact, it's only like 45 milligrams. So does that mean people who are using it are gonna develop cancer though? Not necessarily, because frankly, I feel like using a rat as your reference point that is very likely to have cancer anyways, and you're like administering a very, very high dosage. I guess you could say it's a high dosage. It depends though, I don't know. Realistically, it's, an experimental research chemical at the end of the day and it was abandoned for a reason it was likely based it was based on this data so has any human reportedly got cancer from carterine not that i'm aware of how could you quantify that exactly it's tough to say because it could be attributed to a million other things in somebody's lifestyle and carterine could go completely overlooked but anecdotally carterine has been shown to be generally well tolerated and there's certain studies that show it has anti-cancer properties as well. And in addition to that, in all of the clinical studies conducted on humans using dosages as high as 10 milligrams per day for three months straight, no serious adverse effects or cancer development was reported. And as of now, there is zero evidence to support that carterine use at the dosages used in human trials will cause cancer. 
However, it's still possible. So, you know, take from that what you will. Your own risk profile at the end of the day is up to you. Um, I have yet to see any like glaring evidence of its use in humans, like accelerating cancer cell growth. But at the end of the day, how can you actually like see and quantify that? So it kind of, uh, I don't know. You know, it's uh, it's up to your pr risk profile at the end of the day. And uh, for lipid modulation, I have used it at dosages of 10 milligrams per day. Would I go higher than that? No, probably I would not, to be honest. And at 10 milligrams per day, it even makes me a bit antsy. So the reason I reserve it is for crushed HDL situations. And I feel like that's a pretty uh, immediate health concern, having crushed HDL. So, you know, if you need cartering to get it back up, obviously you have to assess your risk profile at that point to decide if that's something that's worth the, you know, perceived risk to you. So that's the cancer data. That's the equivalent dosage is only 45 milligrams. So take from that what you will. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplatesmoredates.com. Subscribe there. Check me out on Instagram at moreplates underscore more dates. Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat. Check out the podcast link in the video description below drop a five star rating if you don't mind it helps spread the content and reach a new audience as well i appreciate when you guys do that hit the notification bell i don't know if i said that already but apparently you don't show up in the sub box if uh you don't hit the bell so thank you guys for watching talk to you soon